state of Texas today suing a North Texas influencer accusing her of deceptive practices. Her name is Brittany Dawn Davis, known as Brittany Dawn across social media. She sold workout and diet plans. We have reported on her in the past after a lot of complaints back in 2019. The lawsuit I speak of says that Davis did not provide personalized plans, failed to follow through on follow-ups and check-ins with clients. It also lists complaints from customers, including how one woman almost passed out from inadequate nutrition. Clients also complained of issues getting refunds. The state is seeking between $250,000, upwards of a million dollars in penalties, as well as court fees. Yes, we are going to be talking about Miss Brittany Don Nelson today. Hold on to your seats, y'all, because it's going to be a wild ride. Hi guys, welcome to my channel if you are new and welcome back if you've been around here a while. I'm Kendra, this is Kind Kendra Creates. This is my space for sharing my weight loss journey with you. I also do commentary, that's what we're gonna do today. And hopefully I can help you out if you're on a weight loss journey and you'll definitely learn about me along the way. So if that stuff sounds interesting to you, then make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. Okay guys. We're going to get straight into it today, y'all. We're not wasting any time. I have been asked to do a video on Brittany Dawn a couple of times. And I said I was going to wait until the court case was resolved and everything. But I ain't waiting no more. And I'm not waiting because I don't know if you guys are around the socials on the social medias and everything. But she is now a foster mom. She has a literal baby in her care. So that is the reason why I'm gonna talk about her today. And we are gonna just dive right into it. We're gonna get into who is Brittany Don. So Brittany Don was born on March 22nd, 1991. She is from the state of Texas. She was previously married in 2016. And she claimed to have worked as a vet tech for five years. Now look, y'all, I scoured around the internet trying to find information about this woman and I really couldn't find anything about her like background before the social media stuff. And although I really didn't look too long, so my research skills on that part were a little bit trash. So just take what I said with a grain of salt. <laughs> what I got was straight from Wikipedia. <laughs> All my sources are linked below, by the way, if you are interested in reading more about her or any of the things that I talk about in this video. All right. So that's kind of like all the background stuff I got about her, like personal life. And then in 2021, September of 2021, she married her current husband, who is Jordan Nelson. Now, Jordan Nelson was previously a Kansas City, Missouri police officer. Why is this important? This is important because he was sued. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm not laughing because the situation is funny. I'm laughing because of, we're going to get all into it. But the way that people portray themselves online is not necessarily who they always are. But we're going to get further along into those things. So he was sued by the ACLU, which is the American Civil Liberties Union, for excessive use of force on an unarmed black man. A violent arrest captured on a police dash cam has now led to a lawsuit against a former Kansas City, Missouri police officer. The ACLU filed the case accusing the officer of using excessive force. KBC 9's Kelly Eckerman just talked to an attorney on the case. The lawsuit is against former police officer Jordan Nelson. The ACLU filed on behalf of Joshua Bills. You're about to see video of what happened between the two men during an arrest five years ago. You may find this video difficult to watch. Now, I am not going to show that video here, but there is a link in my box if you want to watch the video. But basically, the guy is like this, you know, like the guy is just walking around in his neighborhood, right? And he matches the description 
blackmail of a suspect of some type of crime. So five police officers like merge upon him and he's like, hey, whoa, what's up? But you know, like <laughs> he's just been walking around in his neighborhood. Imagine if that was you just doo -doo 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 -doo, walking around in your neighborhood and five police officers rush up to you. And you, the first thing you're going to do is be like, whoa. And that's what he did. He was kind of like in this kind of stance. Jordan comes up to him, like kicks his legs from under him. And then he falls. And when he falls, his face goes straight into the ground. So excessive force. They came under fire again in October of 2021 when Brittany's dog got hit by a car because they left the house and I guess he got loose or something like that. And instead of taking the dog to the vet, her husband, the excessive force guy, decided to old yeller the dog instead of taking the dog to the vet. And that's just a reference to a movie called Old Yeller. Just Google it, you'll learn about what he did, okay? And sorry, all animal and dog lovers, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about her personal background, their personal background as a couple. Now, we're gonna get into the juicy details. This is the part that everybody knows, right? The fitness influencer, Brittany Dawn. This is what we're gonna talk about now. Okay, so Brittany stated that she suffered from eating disorders. So by the time she was 21, she had lost 50 pounds. She had built a muscular physique and she had overcome her ED. Great, that's wonderful. So she documented her health, fitness, and nutrition information on social media. Of course, who wouldn't? I am documenting my weight loss journey here on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you can follow me along the way. Okay, so um, with all of the messages she was sending, she wound up amassing a following, right? She had 550,000 followers on Instagram. 350,000 subscribers on YouTube. And according to Social Blade Analytics, she was making like $60,000. I believe they said $60,000 a month or so from her social media, which is like, whoa. Which makes you wonder, well, we're gonna get into all of that, but <laughs> she amassed quite a following. And from what I've read online, people were really drawn to Britney in the fitness influencer space because she was very relatable. She was like the girl that was like, oh, I had a troubled past with food. I overcome the relationship and now I nourish my body. And not only do I nourish my body with like kale and quinoa, but other types of food as well, more of like the comfort food. So she was known for like eating these meals that were just like normal foods, you know, and then of course, you know, the healthy options and things like that. And then also like actually eating substance, you know, feeding her body, fueling her body. And um, she was going for the like muscular is sexy look. So that's kind of like how she gained so much popularity with people. And so she began the fitness career in the year 2014. And everybody knows the story. She offered personalized fitness plans, nutritional advice, and also text message communication to customers. Right? That sounds legit. Okay. But complaints were beginning to emerge in the year 2015. So not long after she started her business, people started complaining. And why were they complaining? Well, there was a, a Facebook group, right, that members of, I guess you could say, well, not members, but those who had purchased her nutrition plans or fitness plans or whatever, they were encouraged in that private Facebook group to like share their progress and how they were doing and things like that and communicate with one another. So within their communications with one another, they realized that they had the exact same plans. Now, these are supposed to be personalized plans, which means that it's going to be for your height, for your weight, for your age, for your fitness goals, for your nutrition uh, goals. Uh, and it varies so much, y'all. It's a lot of work, and I know it is. And I say that because there is a um, bodybuilder on YouTube, and she does kind of like reaction kind of commentary stuff. But she's also like a fitness trainer person and she helps people out. Chikara Transformations. I believe she only takes on like 10 clients at a time. So 
she's legit like she said I can't take on any more than that because she literally doesn't have time to so it's a lot and so some of the things that were happening was they were they had the same exact workout and nutrition plans um there was no individualized coaching so like within the text messages it was just like random generic standard things like that's my girl. You're killing it. You've got this, babe. Like, what? Like, how is that helpful? Oh, my gosh. She even talked about, like, her ED, and she claimed to be an ED soldier. And she claimed to have overcame her own ED, which gave off the vibe that she knew what she was talking about in regards to working with clients that had these certain issues. There was even one woman who, like made that very known in her customized nutrition plan. Like, I suffer from ED. I need to increase my caloric intake. You know, this is one of the things that I want to do for my plan. And it was not done for her. And it makes me just feel so much empathy for these clients who were deceived. These people were deceived. They were. Like, you can't say that they weren't. They were deceived. If I pay a pretty penny for personalized coaching, I expect personalized coaching. You say that you're going to text me. I expect a text from you. It could be from your team. That's fine. But it needs to be personalized, right? And you know, it's funny because once again, in my research, scouring the web and everything, I didn't see where she had any types of personal training certifications or any of that. And we already know she's not a registered dietitian because we know that we need at least a bachelor's degree. I believe they're changing the requirements to a master's degree. Yeah. Mm hmm. And you really can't be giving out that type of advice that you're not qualified for because what you're going to do is you're going to find yourself in a lawsuit. And so that's what eventually happened. But we'll definitely get there. So there were nearly 4,000 people that joined a private Facebook group called Brittany Dawn fitness complaints, and they openly shared their experiences. Not only that, there was a change.org petition signed with 10,000 people that wanted to dissolve the Brittany Dawn fitness brand. And of course, her social media began losing thousands of followers. And then in February of 2019, she did like all social media influencers do. They go to their social media and they make an apology. And she was talking about pe giving people refunds, but then she also wanted those people to sign NDAs. Y'all, a non-disclosure agreement basically says that you can't say anything negative about the company, about Britney, about your experience. That is what you need to do if you want your money back. And if you break that NDA, then they have the right to sue you. I jumped into an industry that had no instruction manual. Um, I'm basically going through uncharted territory and I'm doing the best that I can to the best of my ability. I'm using this as a tool to learn and to grow as a professional and to move forward. Brittany Dawn posting an apology on her YouTube channel. I make mistakes and that's what this video is here to do, to address it, to say that I am sorry. But some of her customers saying that apology. And then what happened this year in February 2022? Well, the state of Texas decided to take matters into their own hands. And they sued Brittany. And they also sued Brittany Don Fitness LLC for violating Texas state consumer protection laws. And they are seeking up to $1 million in damages. This is going to get really interesting. And this is kind of why I wanted to wait to do the video until we reach some type of resolution. Right now, she's kind of stalling with the whole lawsuit thing. I believe Carmella, a creator here on YouTube, like went through those proceedings and she talked about it. They were over Zoom and they were made public and it was very just interesting seeing how she was just sitting there quiet, not saying anything. There was no response from her attorney, like, and they had time. So they gave them some more time to answer the complaint but they have right now like no records of like the customers or like how much they paid or anything y'all it's a mess but i have a link to the lawsuit below so if you're interested in checking all that out that is going to be linked in the description box and what makes matters worse is y'all her company 
was no more in 2019, right? Tell me why she received $20,000 through the Paycheck Protection Program during the COVID-19 pandemic for a company that was no longer. That's just interesting. I just thought I'd throw that out there to y'all, but I just, I hate it so much. You guys know that I don't like when people take advantage of people who are trying to get healthy and lose weight and get into shape and all that good stuff, because that just is home for me. I hate it. I hate it so much. So of course, like all social media influencers who mess up, she took some time off from the internet, which is very commendable. And then, like the phoenix that rose from the ashes, she rebranded. So before I begin talking about this section, I do want to preface it and say that I am very open-minded. I believe that everyone has the right to practice their faith as they see fit. I have nothing against anyone of any religion. So we're going to get into the next topic, which is the Christian influencer. So after she took some time off from the internet, she did pop up in November of 2019 and she made a video about it on YouTube and I'm going to have that link below. I didn't watch it. I didn't care to watch it. It's really nothing to me in there of any type of value. But basically, she said fitness and health are no longer my identity. My identity is in Christ. And nothing is wrong with that. Nothing is wrong with, in my opinion, being a believer, having a faith, not having a faith, not being a believer. It's all good to me. Do you, boo-boo. And so now she's back on social media. She has this new Christian influencer vibe. She is uh, lip-syncing sermons and doing all these religious things. Uh, she's also talking about some QAnon conspiracy stuff. I mean, of course. That's definitely one way that you're going to come across to your conservative audience, right? And not only that, embracing the purity culture, preaching about modesty for women, saving yourself for marriage. If that's what you believe in, that's fine. Like, don't really care. But I feel like a lot of times, a lot of religious folks within them believing certain things, they put others down. And that's the part I don't like. That they feel like they are more important or at a higher level or a more higher being because they have this certain faith and they live this certain lifestyle. Like, I feel like everybody's different and you do you, whatever you want to do. But just because you believe a certain way or you live a certain lifestyle and others live differently than you do, that doesn't mean that they're of any less value. And I feel like that's what purity culture does. It creates a certain value on women because of certain ideals. And if you don't live up to that certain ideal, then you aren't worthy as a woman. And I wanted to stop because I feel like as women, and sorry, men, I love y'all men. Y'all know I like men now. I'm only talking to the women because I'm a woman. So that's the only perspective I can speak from. We go through a lot, you know, and I feel like we go through a lot with each other. And I don't think that this is productive to us as women. Like we're not gaining anyone's respect. Like we aren't furthering our agenda or our needs or any of that. And I feel like honestly, a lot of it is taking a step back because a lot of the women in her Facebook group now that she has as the Christian influencer, a lot of those women are suffering. A lot of those women are in pain. A lot of those women need real help. You know, they need real like social service counsel, social services and counselors and things like that because a lot of them are in DV type situations from the things that I've read. A lot of them are in horrible marriages. And you know the answer is to pray about it or to be the long suffering wife or to honor your vows. Is that really the answer? Is it really? I don't really think I wanna talk anymore about that. 
because religion is a touchy subject. So I think we're kind of, yeah, we're going to move on from that. But what I want to say is, though, this is what I want to say. I think that anyone can rebrand themselves as whatever they want to rebrand themselves as. As they call it in a lot of Christian denominations, they call it, they, they have a testimony, right? They came from some type of background and they emerged as a better person. They learned some type of lesson. I feel like I could take her more seriously if she addressed her past. Well, she does kind of address her past. That's not the past that I want her to address. I want her to address how she scammed all these people out of their money. I think if she actually talked about that situation and took accountability, then I think that people would take her more seriously. I believe that, you know, there wouldn't be whole entire Reddit forums devoted to calling her out on her BS. If she would just take accountability for her actions, sincerely apologize. I'm not talking about apology videos where you read off of your cell phone screen and then you delete it. I'm talking about like a real apology. Like y'all, I messed up. Whether she lies in that apology or not, it means a lot to people. Now, we can argue she was purposefully dishonest, she got overwhelmed, she got greedy, whatever the case may be. If it comes from the heart, she acknowledges it, she actually takes responsibility, and she pays up, I think people would be more accepting of her than they are now. Although she has quite a following. From what I have saw, yeah, they say here that she has over 1 million TikTok followers and 460,000 Instagram followers. So they're very they're 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 very interested in this Christian influencer arc. They're so interested, she actually did create her own Christian ministry. She lives freed. They host conferences and retreats. From the information that I found, the conferences or the retreats that they were for one day, they're $125 for a ticket. And I believe on one of those segments, I'm sorry, one, one of the stories that I read, there were about 80 people there at that one day retreat. So, I mean, just with just those 80 people there, um, she's making quite a little pretty penny there. Mm -hmm. And I actually looked on the uh, She Lives Free site and she's going to have like a weekend type conference and that's going to be in Oklahoma and those tickets are $600 there. Yeah. So just 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 keep in mind that she's continuously monetizing her following. She's continuously building some type of following based upon whatever persona she takes on. And within one of the articles that I read, there was a good, and I'm going to have all the links below y'all. So please don't think I'm just pulling stuff out the sky. <laughs> I really liked what this writer wrote. For an influencer wanting to rebrand themselves after a scandal, religious content taps into the good faith of forgiving people and doesn't require years of schooling. Just passion and confident delivery that you have received messages directly from God.
which makes me wonder, like anybody can be a religious leader. You don't have to have any type of divinity schooling, any type of formal training, anything. The only thing that you really need is a following. Guys, uh, we just got home from Colorado yesterday and we just got our first phone call with Foster Baby. And our whole world's about to flip upside down and I'm so excited. And I'm crying because like, oh, wow, we get to love a little baby. Wow. Y'all pray for us. I'm nervous, excited. Jordan's literally rushing home so we can get just things set up. Not that everything's not already set up, but you know, just. And now we're gonna talk about basically the reason why I did this video, okay? <laughs> because without the foster mom, this video would not exist. Okay, I'm gonna get into it, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> so Reddit is a wild and wonderful place. And Reddit is basically where I got all my information from this segment of the video. I do want to give a big shout out to Brittany Dawn Snark. That is the subreddit that I got this information from. Um, so hopefully some members are watching this video, hopefully. And I just wanted to make that known um, because I also did get, a they, they shouted them out. There was an um, article from The Insider and I'll have that link below too. They shouted them out there. I wanted to make sure to shout them out by name because it's very important that you give your sources of information where you got your information from. Some groups like to be more low key and then others are, you know, a little bit more publicly known. And so this one was in the insider article. So I wanted to make sure that I gave them full credit for all of the information I'm about to talk about now. So that insider article does talk about uh, Brittany and her fertility struggles, which she has been open with on her social media. She had a chemical miscarriage in April. In July, she announced her desire to stop fostering. And in October, she suffered another miscarriage, which is very unfortunate. I do not wish that type of stuff on anyone at all. So just earlier this week, she did announce that a foster child was placed with her. And since then, she's been under major scrutiny, y'all. So what is the first thing that you do when you get your baby, what's the first thing that you do? What's the first thing that you do? You update your Instagram bio. <laughs> that was literally like the first thing that she done. Now, I can think about when I first gave birth, I was not interested in social media. I probably, I know I sent photos to my family and everything and it was announced and I probably maybe posted a photo a couple of days later or maybe the next day. But y'all, y'all know if y'all ever given birth, y'all know you just tired, man. You just tired. She also went to the gym. Like it was so crazy how she went to the gym. And I get understand you want to keep healthy. You want to exercise. That's something that's important to me. I try to get in at least three to five days a week, but I just don't know if that would be my priority as a child is placed in my care. I just don't think that would be, especially the fact that I never had children before. So this will be my first foster parent moment and my first foster child, like, I'm just gonna be like, oh my gosh, like, what am I doing? I'm not gonna be at the gym, I can tell you that. And then of course, she posts a photo of the baby. She blurs the baby's face out. And I'm pretty sure the only reason why she blurs that baby face out is because she's required to, um, because you can't share a baby's face, their name or their address on any type of social media. I don't know why you put the address there, but <laughs> you can't share that information about a foster child on social media. And this is probably like the worst thing ever that she did in her post and I'm gonna read it word for word 
Reality for the past 48 hours, it's so difficult being a foster parent to a child that is having withdrawals from substance abuse. It's heartbreaking, gut-wrenching. These are things you don't truly process until you're in the thick of it. Having to watch a child shake uncontrollably from withdrawals and there's nothing you can do to stop it. So you swaddle, hold them, and pray. You start feeling protective because how could someone do this to a child? Yet, I wouldn't change a thing. Foster care is a calling. It's hard, but the Lord is graciously guiding us every step of the way. The reality is we are exhausted, but I'm so grateful the Lord chose us to provide a safe home for this child. We adore this child. We, with our whole heart already. I try not to think about the goodbye that could come at any time with one phone call. Lord, we know you are doing a good thing through all of this. You can restore and redeem anything. I hated that. I hated that so much for so many reasons. First of all, you're talking about your foster child's health. Like, don't do that. Like, why? For what? So you could get kudos online from your followers. Oh my gosh, you're doing the Lord's work. You're doing such an amazing job. Like, okay, I understand people get in some tough situations with their kids and children may need a home temporarily to go to. That is wonderful that people are willing to do that, right? But are you really doing it for the right reasons? That's what I wanna know. Is this just content for you? So not only is she talking about the withdrawal situation and people online have said that there's no way that a child would be in that condition with a foster parent, like shaking uncontrollably, like especially with a first time foster parent. Yeah, I would think that the child would be in good health and stable before they're released to a family. But I don't know nothing about that. I mean, y'all can comment below. Please let me know because I don't know nothing about that. Um, And then she uses God and Lord and all of this stuff a lot. So she's definitely pandering to her base. <laughs> she's definitely doing that in this post. And not only that, she talks about the birth mother, I'm assuming. Because if this child is suffering from withdrawals, that means that the birth mother, you know, had a problem, you know, with some substances. And I didn't like that. I didn't like it at all. I didn't like it. Because instead of showing compassion about the situation, it was more of a judgment. But she's supposed to be the Christian and God can restore and redeem anything. But you want to talk about this child's birth mother. And then, of course, she goes in for those sympathy points when she talks about, I try to not think about the goodbye that could come at any time with one phone call. But you know that's coming. Like, you know this isn't your baby. And the point of foster care is for reunification. That's the point of foster care. And you know that. Like, you know that. So why try to garner those sympathy points from your audience? Because they're saying, oh, well, you, this should be your baby, Brittany, because you're providing this safe home and you don't have a substance problem. And you and your husband are such good Christians. I hate this post so much. I don't want to even talk about it anymore. And so not only is she doing that, y'all, but she's so busy, right? And she has no time, right? That's what she says, okay? She says that she has no time and how hard it is. She makes the statement that she didn't even brush her teeth or brush her hair, but she has on makeup and eyelashes. I mean, her hair looks good to me. It looks like it was brushed to me. I don't know. I could be wrong. I could be 100% completely wrong. But within all of that, not brushing her teeth, not brushing her hair, being so exhausted, only getting three hours of sleep, she finds the time to argue with people online. So somebody wrote, did the company do a background check? And she says, my background check came back perfect, thank you. I'd be cautious believing everything you see about someone on the internet, a gossip form, and especially manipulative news stories, but to each their own. And then she further goes on to, my tolerance is zero, yet years ago, I allowed myself to be pummeled in the comment section of posts. 
And what I found is that apparently people think Christians are easy to walk all over. What they don't know is that they're mistaken. If you haven't noticed in the last year, the old Britney that used to be a punching bag isn't here anymore. The, this new me, this Jesus version of me has a voice and a God-given voice, one that is unwavering, unshakable, and could only come from the Lord. And my confidence, that comes from the Holy Spirit inside of me. You see, Jesus was kind, meek, and gentle. Yes, but Jesus wasn't a pushover. In fact, he was the complete opposite. He spoke boldly. He flipped tables. And instead of bowing to man's opinion of him, he confronted the accuser head on with the utmost grace. And he gives us permission to do the same thing when we walk in obedience. And he releases us to do so. I've got a lion with fire in his eyes behind me and all of heaven backing me up. But you know what? You're right, Brittany. You're right. You do have the right to confront your accuser. You know, you do. Because the state of Texas is doing that for her accusers. They are, you know. Texas sometimes, well, a lot of times they don't get things right. But they got it right with this one. And I am wishing the state of Texas much success with their lawsuit. I don't know what the purpose of this long post was, but you don't have time to brush your teeth. You don't have time to brush your hair. You only get three hours of sleep. But yet and still, you write this long post because someone asked about a background check. And I think that everyone should be concerned with a background check for a foster parent. You know, you have one person that's being sued by the state of Texas. You have one person that's being sued by the ACLU, excessive force, scamming. They're foster parents, y'all. They're foster parents. And how do I know that she is really trying to milk this thing for all it's worth is she is fully on her mom fluencer tip. She has all these links here to things that people can buy. You know, the affiliate links. I've talked about that in my videos before. Make sure you check my videos out because I am not letting any of these influencers live, okay? I'm not doing it. Now she's talking about single mothers and how they're so wonderful and she doesn't know, you know, how they do it by themselves. And she's so happy to have her husband to help her out with a new foster baby. And it's just her trying to relate to her audience now. And she's totally embracing this new mom fluencer thing. You know, she's come under fire a lot from this new life here as a foster parent. And I think that people have the right to be skeptical about it based upon her scamming past, based upon her being a Christian, but not taking accountability for the mistakes that she's had in her past. I really think that it's sad that you want to question the motives of a foster parent right? Because you say they're doing such a great deed. But in this day and age, you kind of have to. I want to share something that I also saw from the Dad Challenge podcast. I know this is a hard line stance, but if you're an influencer like Brittany Dawn, you need to be denied the ability to foster adopt kids because those kids don't get the choice to have their whole lives shared on the internet. This should go without saying. Stop allowing influencers to adopt or foster kids. Kids are content. And I think they summed it up perfectly. It's one thing to share a photo of your child online. You know, like, oh, it's Christmas. They're opening the presents. Yay. That's one thing. But then there's another thing for every other post to be about your kids. Every single moment of their life is on the internet. Like, I'm laughing, but it's awful. Like, even biological children of these influencers, like, they don't have a choice. And it's not like they're a child model or they're a child actor. Believe me, those industries, they have their own set of issues. But those kids, they actually get paid, right? But these kids, 
they're never gonna see a dime of this money. Like, I mean, you know, like some people are responsible with their money and you know, blah, 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 blah. But this money that their parents are making as content creators, it's not the kids' money. And we need to have like so much more oversight into this stuff because these kids are suffering. They do these pranks, they do these challenges, they film every waking moment of their lives. They don't have a personal life. They're filming, you know, puberty and just going on a date and just, you know, I don't just normal stuff like a temper tantrum. And it's just like, why? 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 It's one thing for a child to be of age and, you know, they want to make little silly TikTok dances or whatever. You know, it's like, that's what all teenagers do. Okay, they make little silly TikTok dances. But like, why do you want to have your young children on the internet constantly? And not only that, there are some content creators out there that know, 100% know, that their children are on inappropriate sites or there are people making inappropriate com comments about their children and they continue on. I just wish that I could give her the benefit of the doubt, but I don't, I don't. Based upon her past, based upon her present, I don't. And I, and I really hope that this is totally off topic for me about kids on the internet, <laughs> but I would hope that everyone reconsiders having their child on the internet in such a large capacity to where it could possibly affect their childhood, affect their future, and just affect their lives and their overall development. But I feel like eventually we're going to see some of these stories start coming out about how you know, influencer children were treated and everything. We're already kind of seeing it with Kate Gosselin's son, you know, John and Kate plus eight. Oh, that poor baby. Oh God. Mm, mm, mm. If you haven't heard about that story, go ahead, look it up, read about it or whatever. But he was put in like an institution and they have her like old diary entries where she did not treat him good as a parent and I just feel like it's totally not what a parent does because I feel like your first instinct as a parent is to protect your child at all costs like that's what my instinct is is to protect my child at all costs because he did not ask to be here that is my 100% sole responsibility and I feel like a lot of these influencer children they're not being protected. Somebody has to protect them. You guys, I know it ended really heavy. I hope you like this video and I hope you keep watching y'all. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel if you are not. And as I always say, make sure you continue to spread kindness in a world full of hate. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.